Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Mark again, and welcome back to the Swamp and Stomp hunting channel. I'm just getting finished with doing my very last deer hunt of the season. I'm out here on some public land in, uh, in Central Florida, and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to answer one of the questions that we got from one of our subscribers. Last week, our subscriber Thomas asked us if we could do a video about the gear that we use when we hunt on public land, the type of guns that we use, and some of the laws that might be a little bit different. So, Thomas, this one's for you. So since Thomas's question covered multiple topics, we're going to break this up into two different videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about the gear that we use while we're hunting deer on public land in Florida. In our next video, we're going to talk about the weapons, so the guns and the bows, and how we like to set them up while we hunt. Now before I get started talking about the gear that we use, I want you to understand that you don't need to have all of this gear to get out there and start hunting. If all you've got is a shotgun, just make sure that you meet the safety requirements of your WMA, such as wearing an orange vest when you're hunting deer with a gun. And just get out there, start looking at the habitat, find sign, and see if you can put a deer on the ground. Since we're on the topic of staying compliant with the rules at your local wildlife management area, it's important that you check out the laws at the place that you're going to hunt. You can find all of those rules and laws on the FWC website at the link below. There's also going to be a clickable link down in the description. When you first look at these brochures, you're going to feel like there's a lot of information there. And you're absolutely right. But unfortunately, you really just need to read it all because the rules do change a lot between wildlife management areas. For example, some of the things that you'll find change a lot are the bag limits that are allowed. Some places only allow you to take one deer per weekend, such as quota hunts, and then others will allow you to take a daily bag limit of two or maybe even four deer. It's also important to look at the dates that you're allowed to hunt different things. It's not quite as simple as in other states where archery season is from this date to this date. No, here in Florida, archery season can start on a variety of different dates and end on a variety of different dates. So it's really important that you look at your brochure and see what dates a season is open. Another thing that changes is the species that you're actually allowed to hunt. An example of this would be that some areas will allow you to shoot turkeys during the fall season while you're deer hunting, whereas others you're only allowed to hunt turkey in the spring season. Another big one is size restrictions. This generally applies to deer and how long or how many points are on their antlers. Generally speaking, you'll find rules like they have to have at least five inches on one side or two points, or you'll see things like having at least three points on one side or a 10 inch main beam. Now, some people are a little intimidated by these rules because you're thinking, how am I supposed to estimate how long the antlers are of a deer? One of the rules of thumb that I like to use is the length of the ears. Now, generally on a mature buck, their ears are gonna be about six inches in length. So you can kind of use that to gauge approximately how long the main beam is of their antlers. Now if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then just use the points to figure out if it's legal or not. It's pretty easy to tell if it has enough points. Now another thing that I like to look at is the types of weapons that you're allowed to use. Now obviously during archery, you can use a bow, but you can't use a crossbow unless you have a special disability that allows you to do so. During muzzle loading season, you can use a muzzle loader. But during general gun, it can sometimes get a little bit confusing. In some areas, you're only allowed to use a shotgun, and you're not allowed to use center file rifles. But you are allowed to use pistols. So it's a little bit confusing, and it's really important that you look at those brochures to figure out what you are allowed to use. So now that we've covered laws, it's time to get into the gear that we like to use while we hunt deer on public land in Florida. Now, if you like the content of this video, please give us a thumbs up, and make sure that you've subscribed to our channel. As far as gear goes, on public land, you're looking at everything that you need. I'm wearing it right now. I've got my tree stand, I've got my backpack, I've got my weapon of choice, I've got my binoculars, I've got my orange vest, this is real important, and I've got my harness on, because you always gotta think about safety first. So I wanted to take this opportunity to break down all the gear that I'm using, how I use it, and then I'm actually gonna set it up on this tree and show you how I get set up in the tree. So first, I'm going to take off my pack. Now this pack weighs about 30 pounds altogether. Now I've already done a video about this stand and how I rigged it up. And if you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a link down in the description. So be sure to check that one out. 
one thing that I wasn't able to demonstrate in that video is how my backpack fits really nicely into this cradle. Because it has these quick climbing stirrups right here, it doesn't shift back and forth, and I clip it in right here so that it doesn't move. And uh, when I carry it, it keeps all the weight down below, so it pushes on my back rather than pulling on my shoulders. Another nice thing about it is you can set it up with the cables down here, and it's like a little kickstand so that all of your stuff stays out of the water when you're hunting over some, some wet places. So let me go ahead and get this backpack out of the way. Now, Danny's already done a video before where he talked about what kinds of things we carry in our backpacks when we're hunting. So I'm not gonna get into those details, but if you wanna see that video, there's a link down in the description. I'm here to focus on the stand and how I get set up. Now, before I start taking this apart, I just want to point out that this stand is held together by two little straps, okay? So we've got a strap right here that stops the lap bar from clanging around, and then down on the bottom, we have the tree strap. Now, it's really important to me that I use the tree strap to hold the stand together, because that means that I can't forget it, because that's the one thing that's going to keep you safe when you're in a tree stand. So, first, take the seat out of the way. Then, I take this strap down. This is my backpack strap. I put this right into my pocket. I always wear pants that have cargo pockets so I can carry lots of stuff in there. Then, I have this little lanyard here that keeps both of the tree stand pieces tethered together. And I undo that so that they're loose. Then I flip it over and I take this little strap off. And I just attach this anywhere on the stand just so that it's uh, it's not gonna get lost. So put that right here. Now it's time to actually set up the stand. So flip it this way, and I'm gonna take the top part off. So I'll put the top part on and I'll lift it up high. Then it's time to put the bottom part on. Do the exact same thing. So that we've got both sides on. Now I'm going to take this tether. I'm going to make sure that I attach the two pieces of stand together. That way, if you drop the bottom part, it's not going to fall all the way down the tree so that you can't get back down. Now I'll flip the seat the right way up and just tuck it neatly up here so that it's out of the way for now. So now that I've got both pieces attached, there's only one thing that we still have to do. We have to take our uh, our pull-up rope and attach that to our weapon. Once everything's ready to go, all we have to do is mount it. So the way I like to do it, I like to put the top half up as high as I can, like this and use it to pull myself up and step right up. Then I'll drop the top half down. So it's nice and low and I can step right over. Once I've stepped over, I'm ready to start climbing. <clears throat> now once I'm seated in my tree stand, I'm gonna start to climb. Now I usually like to go up about 20 to 30 feet, but just for demonstration, I'm honestly just gonna go up a few feet until I get to uh, my accessory strap. All right, 
Now let's pretend that I just climbed all the way up a tree. In reality, I only went up one step. But, generally speaking, I'll get a few steps off the ground and then it's time to hang up my safety strap. So, once I get my safety strap into place, this is when I hang up my backpack. Now I hang my backpack, I have this same carabiner on my backpack that I use to attach to my stand when I'm walking out, and I simply clip it onto the safety strap. So it hangs right next to my stand, just like that. Now, once I have my backpack hung up, I can start pulling all the things out that I want to use. Now, one thing I can't show you right now is my accessory strap because I already have it in place because that's where I hang my camera. See, my camera arm is actually tied into my accessory strap. It's a simple ratchet strap that I took apart and I put these accessory hooks onto that strap. So now I only have to hang up one strap instead of hanging up like three like I used to do. So uh, I'll use this to hang up my jacket. Uh, this is nice because if it starts to rain, I can simply drape my jacket right over my backpack so I don't have to keep rain cover in my backpack. I'll take out my grunt call. I'll hang up my headlamp because I'm usually doing this in the dark. Um, and then once I've done that, it's time to start sitting down. And all I do is I simply take my lap bar off the hinges so that I can move freely and then I'll just push it down and step right over it and kick it up underneath my butt. So once you've got everything in place, it's time to sit back and uh, wait for a deer or wait for a hog. Um, once I get seated, this is when I'll pull up my, uh, my gun or my bow. Um, and I'll, if I'm hunting with a gun, I'll lay it across my lap. If I have my bow, I have a bow holder right next to me. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that pretty much sums up how I hunt on public land. Um, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to send us a message or drop a comment and ask us. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and make sure to check us out on Instagram. That's uh, Swamp and Stomp 18. Or you can check out me or Danny, which is just Swamp and Stomp underscore Mark or Swamp and Stomp Danny. As always, we'd like to thank you for tuning into Swamp and Stomp. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. Make sure you hit that little bell so that you get notifications every time we post up videos. We just did a giveaway, and we'll be doing another one once we hit 300 subscribers. So make sure you tell all of your friends to subscribe now. Again, thank you. Be safe out there. Stay diligent. And good luck in the woods, guys.